Hello everyone, my name is Cameron and welcome back to the Survivor Series review. This is part two of the Survivor Series 2018 review and we're going to pick up where we left off going into the post-match of Ronda vs. Charlotte and uh, the final match of Dana Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. So really quick before I get into this, I'm going to give a quick recap of what we covered in the first one. We covered the tag team 10 on 10 elimination match, which Team SmackDown won. We covered the Raw women's team beating the SmackDown women's team with the Soul Survivor being Nia Jax. Soul Survivor for the tag team one being the Usos. We covered the Intercontinental Champion Seth Rollins beating the United States Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. This is a 3-1 lead for 2-1 lead, sorry. 2-1 lead for Raw at this point. We covered the Cruiserweight Championship match. Buddy Murphy retaining against Mustafa Ali. Um, that has no correlation to that match. Uh, where else? What else did we cover? Oh, yeah. We covered the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Authors of Pain, beating The Bar. Uh, that puts SmackDown down 4-1 to one, uh, and puts us up at a... What's my spot for that right now? Fuck, what was I at, at that one? Um, oh, Soul Survivors to the Raw. Oh, and then the Raw men's. So I was 3 and 2 after the Cruiserweight Championship match. I was 4 and 2. What other one did I fail on? Oh, uh, that's right. The first two matches. Okay. Um, then we covered the men's elimination match with Raw winning uh, Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley, Andrew McIntyre being the Soul Survivors. Putting Raw up, um, or they up. putting Raw up four to one, and putting me at four and two on predictions. Then we covered the entirety of the f match between Ronda and Charlotte. Charlotte attacking Ronda with a kendo stick, and Ronda winning by DQ, putting me up five and two on predictions, and putting Raw up five and five to one in the um, score of Survivor Series. So now we're going to go into the post-match of Charlotte versus Ronda and then the final match of the night, Dan Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. So let's get into it. Uh, so after the bell rang, Charlotte starts attacking her with the kendo stick some more. Uh, the, another direct quote from Michael Cole. Come on, ref, do something. The match is over. The match is over, dumbass. There's nothing he can do to stop her. He can't say, stop, stop, stop. You know, if the match was still going, yeah, he could. But the match is over. Like you said, you dumb motherfucker, Michael. The match is over. There's nothing he can technically do to stop this match. The only thing that could stop this at this point is security. Unless you really want the ref to step into... So, so Charlotte's not just swinging. She's swinging for the fences. So unless you want the referee to risk his life by stepping in to a crazy woman's swing area. Unless you're going to do that yourself, Michael. Shut the fuck up. Because I... Pr I would not step into the area of a kendo stick's range if someone's swinging it wildly trying to hurt the other person. She broke the kendo stick, ref tries to stop her, tries, I say, gets pushed back, hits her more with the kendo stick, uh, Charlotte's turning heel, I love this, I was very happy to see Charlotte turn heel, if you guys remember back to when Becky and Charlotte, when Becky first turned heel, I wasn't very keen on it. I really think Charlotte should turn heel. Well, it seems like they're kind of sort of redoing this and finally turning her heel again. I like her as a face. She's kind of boring as a face. She's like Randy Orton. She's really good as a heel, but she's kind of boring as a face. Um, and I like the fact that she has now turned heel. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, yeah. Uh, Cole's still calling for someone to do something about it. I hate Michael Cole. I, I've never shied away from the fact that I hate Michael Cole. Michael Cole is an annoying asshole. He is always annoying. His voice is annoying. His, the way he reads the scripts is annoying. Everything he does is annoying. Michael Cole, you are one of the worst commentators of all time. And Byron Saxton is a commentator. I mean, Michael Cole at least knows what he's doing. Byron doesn't, but Michael's still more annoying than Byron is. Ref takes a chair from her, Charlotte starts to walk away, runs back in, hits natural selection onto the chair, more refs coming to get her back off. Uh, she attacks them, sets a chair around her on his throat, throws the last ref out, and stomps down on the back of the chair, stomping her right into her throat. Charlotte being backed away finally. Uh, the LA crowd is savage and chants, thank you, Charlotte, which is like, yes. Ronda finally starts to get up, uh, get helped up. She's bruised pretty heavily. Direct quote from Corey Graves. 
This has never happened to Rosa, Ronda Rousey in her life. Did he not watch the match she had against Holly Holm? Trust me. What Holly Holm did to her is a million times worse than what Charlotte did to her. Holly Holm fucked her face up. Like, bad. Like, really fucked her face up. This... I mean, yeah, this was a beating and a half, and it was pretty fucking brutal, but she still came out of this without her face being fucking pummeled in. So, so yeah, Corey, you're wrong. You're very wrong. Uh, crowd starts chanting, you deserve it. Again, LA is savage as fuck. Um, it was a good match. The entirety of the match and the beatdown after was really good, and I really liked it. Um, but yeah, it's just... It was awesome to see. I don't know why. I, I've not said... I, I've kind of gone not gone away from saying that I don't really like Ronda. Uh, how fast she's been pushed. The fact that she's been undefeated this entire time. Um, and yeah. I didn't want her to win that match. But I'm not retarded. And I knew she was going to win the match. Uh, which is kind of like, okay. I don't want you to win the match. But I'm smart. And I'm not losing this fucking prediction part because of that. So, yeah. Next, the final match of the night, the WWE Champion Daniel Bryan versus the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. I predict, predicted Daniel Bryan by AJ coming out and attacking him, uh, disqualifying Brock Lesnar in the process. So, let me just, before I get into this, I'm going to clarify something. AJ did nothing wrong to get kicked in the nuts and to lose his championship. He did not in any way disrespect Daniel Bryan's name. Daniel Bryan is just a pissy little baby. And I'm sorry. I like Daniel Bryan. I do. I love the fact that he's a champion. I love the fact that he's heel again. It's awesome. But he's just being a baby because Daniel or AJ in no way disrespected his name. He just said your fucking name, dude, saying you're the best person he's ever worked with the in with in the ring. Why is that a problem for you? Why are you a little baby? Okay? Although it was hilarious to watch AJ get kicked in the nuts again. I feel so bad for AJ. <laughs> he takes every he takes so many low blows. It's gotta suck. All right, so Daniel comes out. He has no shirt on, which is very different from how he normally comes out. He has a team Hell No style tights on, so like the black and red and white. Um, he does not do the yes things. He does like two of them and stops. Doesn't do it when he gets in the ring. Oddly enough, his graphic still has the yes, and his side plates still say yes, 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 which is really odd, but whatever. Um, fans start chanting, we want AJ. So do I. So do I. I wanted AJ versus Brock, too, so bad. Uh, Brock's still not on his way to the ring. He finally starts coming out, and I have to say, they had, like, hologram sort of things for people. You know, they had like a, a raw sort of thing and they had one for Brock Lesnar and a few other people. They look really fucking cool. I, I can't deny that. They look awesome. But it seems like SmackDown didn't get the same treatment for them. Um, the only people I really saw get them were Ronda, Team Raw, and Brock. So it feels like they are kind of, again, it's Vince burying SmackDown Live, which is like, dude, stop. Everyone knows SmackDown is the better show week by week. But yet, you can't fucking see that because you're a senile old fuck. Continuing. Uh, Daniel stays outside the ring, plays some mind games with Lesnar. Uh, no count by the ref for some reason. Like, the ref does not decide to start counting. I don't I don't know why. Uh, Brian mocks Lesnar do, doing the uh, thing he does. You know, the, like, hop around bullshit he does. Uh, Brian gets brought down with a big forearm strike. Hits with some releasing German suplexes. Uh... Lesnar drags him to the center of the ring, tries to start a Suplex City chant, and he works. He goes, Suplex City, and then the fans start chanting. I was like, how the fuck did he manage to actually get the fans chanting that? Unless they just decided to play a thing of fans chanting it and act like the fans actually started chanting it, but whatever. Another releasing German Suplex. Uh, Heyman looks honestly appalled. He's like, I'm like, dude, he does this to everyone. Why are you just now fucking worried about it and scared? Belly to belly release suplex, fans start chanting boring. Honestly, this isn't what I expected. I didn't expect the squash match. Uh, another belly to belly release, another one. Crappy match to close the show. Dale gets kicked out of the ring. Like, literally, he just gets, like, he's on, on his back and he gets kicked out of it under the rope. Dale gets thrown in the barricade, thrown in the barricade again on the other side of the ring, throws him back into the ring. Bear hug in on Daniel, slams him down. Brock has that sadistic smile on his face. 
Uh, releasing German suplex again. Daniel is in a very bad way at this point, and it's like, okay, just end the match, Brock, please. Another releasing belly to belly. Daniel looks out of it. It got hard to watch at this point. Like, it literally got hard to watch. F5 to Daniel. Brock picks him up at 2 because he's an asshole. And yes, AJ versus Brock 2 probably would have been a lot better at this point. Uh, Daniel kicks him in the face. Second, Brock seemed a bit pissed off. F5 sending Daniel's leg into the ref. Low blow, running knee strike, two count. Heyman yelling for Lesnar to get up. Lesnar holding his nuts. How the ref didn't immediately disqualify Daniel Bryan at this point because Brock's still holding his balls at this point. It's like, um, I don't understand how. Daniel kicks him in the face. Second, or wait, whoops. Uh, kicks to Lesnar's leg, going insane on him, attacking his face with the stomps. They did to AJ at the end of their match on SmackDown. Heyman yelling for Lesnar again, running knee strike gets caught. F5 gets avoided, and Lesnar gets sent outside. Crossbody gets caught, but Lesnar gets sent into the posts. Uh, running knee strike off the apron of Lesnar. Suicide dive gets caught, and Brian gets sent into the post. Sends him into the post again, spine first. Lesnar grabs his steel steps and runs them into the post as Daniel moves out of the way. It's another running knee strike off the apron. Brian starts attacking him. Lesnar attacks back with a strong knee, and both men go back in the ring. Another running knee strike for a two count. A chop block by Daniel starts attacking the leg into the post, doing the uh, thing where he just kind of slams his leg into the post by grabbing it and dragging it. Uh, missile drop kick. Heyman yelling for Brock some more. Corner drop kicks gets caught into an F5 on the last. The Lesnar's leg gives out, though, and Daniel turns it into a yes lock. Lesnar fights out, but Brian elbows the back of his head and relocks it in. Brian moves it into a triangle. Lesnar p picks it up into an F5. Three count. Lesnar wins. Five and three on predictions. Raw wins the pay-per-view. Six to one. Seven out of ten. It was a pretty good match. Um, shows the guy in the crowd who goes, kind of like, what the fuck is this shit? He looked really unsatisfied. They cut away from him so fucking fast. Like, it's like, and then it's gone. I was like, that's exactly why they're not showing that kind of shit because they don't want you to realize how pissed off fans get at this kind of shit. Um, the match ended up a little bit better than I thought it would be. Daniel almost won, which I guess was kind of cool, but it was kind of like, okay, this is a bullshit match. Now, if you watch the pay-per-view live, you know that the entire night and at the end of the night, they said that Raw had a clean sweep, six to nothing, because... They didn't fucking count the pre-show. And the reason they didn't count the pre-show is because SmackDown wasn't supposed to win that. So, let me rephrase this. SmackDown, a team with The Usos, The New Day, Sanity, Gallows and Anderson, and The Clones, faced off against the team of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, The B Team, The Ascension, Lucha House Party, and The Revival. Arguably, this team had four great talents. This team had two. Y'all really expect us to believe that Raw was supposed to win that fucking match. Are you trying to bury everyone on SmackDown's team? Literally. Are you trying to bury the Usos and the New Day and Sanity and all these good talents on Team SmackDown that you're going to have a bunch of jobbers and the Revival and the Ascension beat them? But apparently what happened is Vince wasn't gorilla backstage, which means he wasn't like in the back, sitting in the back watching it. Because apparently he doesn't give a shit about the kickoff either. Which means, fuck you Vince, you dickhead. Why the fuck did you put the goddamn match on the kickoff then? You fucking dumbass. It's really stupid that they decided to put this on the kickoff because Vince apparently doesn't give a shit and doesn't watch the kickoff. So why the fuck should we care about the kickoff? Why should they even have a match on the kickoff? The kickoff could literally be 30 minutes and then go into the pay-per-view. That would work fine for me, because guess what? One, it saves time that we need to waste on listening to all of the fucking pre-show panel talk. Two, it saves the fucking potential of a match where it's like this being actually counted. But apparently, since he wasn't backstage, something got lost in the fray, and Team SmackDown ended up accidentally winning, so it was supposed to be a clean sweep of Raw winning 7 to nothing. However... No one would buy that. I guarantee you no one would buy that Team Raw actually beat Team SmackDown. Unless they cheated like fucking crazy to beat Team SmackDown. Here's the good news. It's given Xavier Woods a thing on Twitter, which he's like 6-1 to one every time. And I'm like, yes, 
Exactly. Keep fucking shouting it from the rooftops until they fucking acknowledge it. Because the SmackDown and Raw Tag Team Divisions deserve to actually be acknowledged. Stop fucking sweeping that under the rug. That match was fantastic. It was better than your fucking main event and the Raw men's match put together. Sorry, getting off on a tangent. I love tag team wrestling, you guys know this. So to see them not be counted, to see that be pushed, swept under the rug and not matter, pisses me off. Because it really shows, one, how little Vince gives a shit about SmackDown, and two, how little Vince gives a shit about tag teams. And it bugs the hell out of me. So, yeah. Raw won the night, 6-1. to one. I went 5-3 and three on predictions. I hope you guys have enjoyed I'll see you for War Games because I still haven't finished it. I'll see you for War Games, the review, and then I'll see you next month for TLC. Stay golden. Peace.